Hello, YouTubers. This is Mary once again. Thought I'd make a quick video reporting on some a few things. You know, I was thinking about <clears throat> this uh, trial with Amber Geiger. I wasn't surprised at the sentence that she got. I was surprised at the judge. I wasn't surprised, but the the brother, I wasn't too surprised at that. Because, you know, if you talk about the faith and you believe the Bible and when it's time to show what you believe, he, he really, he showed it. He, he did what he felt he needed to do to help heal himself. And forgiving her was part of his healing. So I could understand that. But the judge, I, I, I don't know. She might have some backlash about that because she's not supposed to be involved in that. She's supposed to be strictly by the books. And that's it. She got involved too personally in the case, uh, as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, she'll have to go through whatever she got to go through. But all in all, that's just the way it is. But I was thinking about when I eat ice cream now, I'm just this type of person. I, if I, I get it in my brain, I have to work on getting it out. I think about him when I eat ice cream now because when you're eating ice cream, for me, especially bluebell vanilla, that's my favorite. When you're eating ice cream, when I'm eating ice cream, there's just no other feeling. You cannot be angry. You cannot be mad. Ice cream, for me, is just the closest <laughs> closest thing to heaven besides uh, orgasm, okay? But you, I really almost get an orgasm when I eat good ice cream. Uninterrupted ice cream. But both of them's ice cream was interrupted that day. So, I don't know. He probably was, oh, wiggling his toes and it was just feeling good. So, I think of, when I eat ice cream, I think about him. And, I don't know. It's a lesson learned for everybody in that situation. But, he he's he's okay. And Amber will be okay, too. We all be okay. But, I was thinking about some things my my half brother, but he's a baby brother. I think he's about nine years younger than I am. We had almost a three hour conversation the other day. He's a staunch Christian, like I used to be, rooted in the Bible and in faith, and he knows how I feel because when I first met him. I think he was about 11 years old, and I took him to a church convention, and he knew what I, he knows what I used to believe in, but he cannot fathom why I changed my mind about Christianity. It just bothers him, and he, 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 he does these sneak attacks. It's not an attack, but it ends up being an, an attack. He can't figure out my logic. Aren't you afraid that you're going to go to hell because you don't believe in the birth, the death, and the resurrection and all that? And I tell him, I say, whether I believe it or not, it doesn't change where I, my station where I am now. And I... Uh, you know, you people that, that have evolved from religion and moved on to something else, you, you understand what I'm talking about. But he talked, he talked, and I talked, and I talked, and I asked him some questions about things in the Bible. He couldn't come up with an answer. I said, now ask me something. He asked questions, and... I, I mean, I know the Bible almost backwards and forward because that's what we ate. I mean, since I was a kid, that was just the Bible, the Bible. That's the only book we could read. But at the end of our long conversation, he says, you know, I'm trying to convert you. 
I said, I feel that's what you're trying to do. I said, do you think I'm trying to convert you? He said, I feel like you are. I said, I'm not. I said, because you can evolve and still keep your foundation. You, you don't even realize that you can move on and keep your beliefs with you. You could, you can evolve, but he, he doesn't understand what evolution is for your own soul. Your soul is on an evolution. He couldn't understand that. So he, um, I tried to explain to him, how can, I said, how can you convert me? That means to change me. It's like you got a house that's already built and you're going to convert it. You can't do that. You got to tear that house down and start all over. I said, now, you, on the other hand, you can be changed. You can, we can add on to you. But me, you can't do that. And he couldn't figure that out. I said, well, why don't you read another book? And he said, I don't need another book. I said, well, if you don't need another book, then that's okay. I said, but I am not afraid. And you are afraid. No, no, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I said, you just said you're afraid of going to hell. That's kind of like being afraid of the boogeyman under the bed. I said, you you create this hell. And then when you die, you might be in hell because the mind is powerful. It creates things that are in your mind because you you plant that seed in your mind, and at the end of the day, when you dream or whatever, that's going to be on your mind, and it may manifest. So, it's just, you you create your own heaven or hell, but he, he didn't understand, and I don't know. I, I, I'm not trying to mm, have a relationship with him. I mean, even though he is my half-brother, he looks just like my father, but if it's going to always be this, you know, words that we have about our our religion. I don't even have a religion, but his religion is sacred to him. And he tells me, well, for you to back down, you must not never had it. I said, well, if you believe that, then that's what you believe. But we kind of left it like it was, but I don't know. But anybody out there struggling with uh, their religious belief or whether it's right or wrong, religion, the word religion means to restrain. And Greek word meaning to restrain, and that's what religion does. It restrains you. It's a rain, and it holds you back like you put a rain on oxen or cows or even a horse. Who's ever holding the ropes, they have you under control. And the church or whoever is, they got the reins on your neck. And that's a hard, hard bondage because even if you try to step outside of that religion, you stand on the porch and look a little bit. You might step off the porch and you're still afraid because when I left the church, oh God, I, I mean, when things got rough, I said, ooh, this, this happened because I left the church. And then I run back in church, get on the altar and ask the church for forgiveness. Then the next six months, something else would come up. It just, it wasn't like so much sin. It was just life and my need to grow. It's like your 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 brain is confined in your your thoughts are confined in your head, and you really want to experience more. And I don't understand how you how can you want knowledge from another source other than the Bible and be afraid. How can you even go to college or go to school and read another book? And not want to adventure out. But I finally walked off the porch. And walked down the street. 
Next thing I know, I'm at an intersection, traffic and cars, and I saw many things. And it, it was kind of scary. It was very scary. But I had to remember the road I had been on and who, what, or however it was that was my protection. And when I needed the comfort of God, I didn't have to go grab my Bible and, oh, let me run to the church so they can pray for me. Let me, oh, let me do this. It was like God was a yes, sir, God, a right now, God, right then, even before I could even breathe a prayer. It was the answer was there. It's like, oh, my God, you right here. Then I began to re, uh, be reassured that this God was with me, even though I wasn't walking in the traditions and the teachings and the doctrine that they had given me all my life. And I said, well, now, I'm not, a, uh, it's a brave new world. I, I, you know, you still walk gingerly and, and you know, kind of like when you're walking barefoot and you're not sure and you're tender, your feet are tender. But the longer you walk away from the doctrine and examine the doctrine and you find out what's true, but you always have to trust your soul. And a lot of us, we don't trust our souls. I think that's what's wrong with my little brother. He, he, he said to me, he said, if I leave God, if I leave the church, that's what he said. If I leave the church, I probably start drinking and chasing women again. I don't want to do that. And I said, oh, okay. So that's what that is. Okay. I said, well, baby, if if that's what it takes to keep you holding your family together, then that's what you do. But that's kind of like. A, a juggler juggling balls or bottles, man, and in the middle of it, you still, you, you're the one that's doing the juggling. You think God is doing the juggling. That's you. You better not drop that, that bottles because they're going to break. But when you realize you don't have to juggle nothing, you'll put the bottles and the balls down and just don't play that game no more. But anyway, that's, that's a lot of issues that people are dealing with and you just have to, I don't know, walk the walk that you're walking and be sure-footed. That's the thing. Be sure right, that you know your way. And anytime you get lost, you might have to backtrack. And sometimes you have to even ask people, where am I? Uh, where y'all going? You know, how do I find this? And and then sometimes you can be going somewhere and you ask people questions. They don't even know what you're talking about. So in the end, you're still going to have to have this source from on the inside. Like I said before, that uh, homing device and GPS that you already have. You don't have to uh, worry about being lost. But anyway, that's all I got to say, guys. Y'all have a good weekend. Bye.